We all love reptiles, but what if I told you that there were five that you probably didn't know existed? Today, let's go over the top five reptiles you probably didn't know about that actually make great pets. My name's Adam, this is Littlefoot, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Let's get right into it. Number five, Bismarck ringed pythons. How didn't you know that these things were a thing? That's what I said when I found out about them maybe a year ago. And I've, I've featured them in a different video before. I just think these might be the most interesting species that could make a good pet that do well in captivity that nobody knows about. And just to be clear, nothing on this list is going to be something that doesn't do well in captivity. All of these would make great captives. So no earless monitors or marine iguanas or elephant trunk snakes. All of these things you could actually go out and get and do pretty well with as long as you've got the wherewithal to take care of reptiles. So these guys are absolutely unreal. The way that they look, and they actually have a couple different colorations that they can be, but in general, when they're babies, they're gonna be orange and black. So a brilliant orange, bright orange, and a black. And then as they get older, they're gonna mute out a bit. So not quite as dull, very similar in the way that, say, a Colombian rainbow boa would look. They're gonna have the crazy iridescence. They're not gonna be crazy bright and beautiful, although some do keep their uh, colors, which is very uncommon. They're, I guess the best way I could describe it is the same sort of mute coloration, but with the iridescence of a Colombian rainbow boa. Now these guys come from, you guessed it, the Bismarck Archipelago, which is off of New Guinea. These guys in the wild, they're gonna get between four and six feet on average, although it's more common five to six. And then of course there's the outliers that are seven and they might get as big around as say a golf ball or something like that. So they're not gonna be a, a reticulated python by any means. They're gonna stay rather small or a good impressive size and they have that really cool coloration. What makes them interesting is they make good captives. Sure, higher humidity, 60 to 80%, something like that. And this isn't a care guide. Do your research first if you get one of these things. Uh, but it's not going to be very difficult to care for. Relatively easy humidity and temperature requirements. Uh, and of course, they eat really well as well. And in the wild, they eat rodents, so there's no problem switching them onto rodents like you'll find with some other more interesting snakes that are more rare in the reptile hobby. These guys are really easy. And just like a Woma Python, for example, just trying to compare these guys to something you probably know about, their feeding response is unreal. So, although they can be tamed down and good for handling, watch out for that feeding response because, I mean, nobody likes to get tagged by an animal that doesn't let go. And these guys, they are bred in the US. I don't know of anyone in Canada or the UK that breeds them, but if you do, put in the comment section below. A lot of the times I do these videos and people ask, well, where can I get one? I don't know where you can get one of these, but if someone does know, please put it in the comments section. These guys are fantastic, and I would love to eventually be able to find one. I think that they're beautiful, um, and they would make a really great captive snake, not just to look at, but for handling as well, and a great educational tool. So, Bismarck ring pythons make number five. Number four, one that is kind of surging in popularity, but even I didn't know about until two or three years ago, keel-bellied lizards. The green keel belly lizard is interesting. It's actually part of the Lacerta family, and you guys know that I've got Bob, who is great to look at and fun to watch and fun to feed, but not super handleable. And that kind of goes for the cousins of Bob, the green keel belly, keel, green keel, green keeled belly scaled, green keeled belly scaled lizards. It's, it's a mouthful, a little bit. These guys are arboreal and I know that people like to say, oh, all our arboreal things are not handleable. Well, that's not true, but in this case, it kind of works. Yeah, they're not really that handleable. But as a display piece, these things are beautiful. They're not big, they're not huge. They do have a huge tail though, and it's prehensile. And to me, prehensile tails are cool. That's what monkeys use to get around the trees, right? So these guys, they'll use their tail to climb. Uh, they've got claws or hands or paws or whatever you'd call them that are capable of climbing as well. And of course, although they will hide a lot, these guys, when they do come out and if you give them a space to feel comfortable, they are going to be beautiful to look at. Say you have them in your office, your reptile room, your living room, whatever. These guys are a perfect centerpiece to look at. Just gorgeous. These guys in the wild, you'll find in parts of Africa like Tanzania and Kenya, and they're insectivores. 
I personally like insectivores because you can get them crickets once a week and for the rest of the week feed them something that can sit in a bin like uh, mealworms or superworms or whatever. Very diet of course, again, not a care guide, nothing's going to be a care guide on here. Just giving you a rundown of why these things make great captives. And although again, they're going to have a higher humidity level, you're going to need a UVB light, it, they don't need a huge enclosure size. So I think these guys would actually be perfect. If you're looking for a lizard that is beautiful and you don't really mind that handling it isn't too much of an option. I mean, I'm sure you could tame them down with a lot of perseverance, but in general, these things are eye candy, not to be handled. And if you're wondering, yes, they do have keeled scales on their bellies, which is where they get their name. They're actually kind of a more yellowish color on their bellies, and then on their back, they're mostly green, although you can find color variation uh, of in the species, but it's a smooth scale on the front, or on the back of them, I should say, the top of them, and then on their back, this leopard gecko's gone away. Little foot, and on their bellies, keeled. So, top, not keeled, bellies, keeled. All right, I think we can move on. Number three. Painted Agamas. I am kind of embarrassed to say I didn't know these guys made great pets until I watched Clint's Reptiles video. So yes, that video is the inspiration for me having them on the list. And if I could find one, I would have one. But they're mostly field collected. So here's the thing, right? All of these animals are really good in captivity, right? Well, these ones are too, but you'd have to have one that has been acclimated well. Because when they come in, they come in from the wild and they're going to be riddled with parasites a lot of the times. Just it is always issues getting things that are field collected or farm raised even, right? So these guys being bred in captivity isn't much of an option. Little foot that tickles on the sunburn, stop. But if you can get one that was, for whatever reason, you can find one that's captive bred or one that's been in a collection that's gone through the treatment for having the uh, internal parasites and is a healthy specimen, they'll live a long time. They're very hardy. Um, they come from a dry environment. Their diet is really easy to, to take care of as well. These guys are known to be very handleable, very much like a bearded dragon, but a smaller size, which means you can get away with a smaller size enclosure. And again, I'm not gonna be putting parameters out there. From what I've read, 75 gallons for some people is overkill, but I always like bigger enclosures. So if that's overkill for some people, it must be a really good size of enclosure, and, and that's really not a lot of space. So I think that these guys, if you're looking for something that is a little bit different, but you like the way bearded dragons act, and the way that they kind of move, and how handleable they are, maybe a painted agama, if you could find one, would be perfect for you. Now the good news is, these guys, if you can find them, aren't super expensive. Now, small guys like me and big guys like Clint, we're running our mouths about how awesome they are, which, I mean, so maybe that'll change eventually once people realize how awesome that they are. And to do this video, by the way, I didn't pull this off the internet. I found someone who has painted agamas and, and spoke to them and got their insight. And I guess basically everything that I thought was true is true. These guys are fantastic species. Most of the specimens that you'll find are kind of calm or at least can be handled and they become very handleable like a bearded dragon. So if you want something that's just a little bit different, have I said this already? Painted agamas are pretty cool. Number two. Abronia or Mexican alligator lizards. Now I know a lot of you are saying, I know what those are. I know they become very popular the last year. And you see in reptile groups, a lot of people posting videos of them and pictures. And I want to say thanks to Shannon for letting me use uh, these videos of her Abronias. Uh, check out her Instagram page right here. These are very interesting. They look like dragons. These guys, I, I can't really think of anything that's this small, but is this good looking. If I could have one of these in an enclosure in the corner of my room, I don't know if I'd ever watch TV again. I would just kind of like look at them. They're absolutely beautiful. They're usually a bright green, very interesting. And I know green is very common in nature, but the way that their scales look, give them this texture, right? This very interesting appeal that a lot of other animals that are green or whatever, if you call green a boring color, it looks a little bit different. And what's interesting with these guys is if you have them in a room that isn't your reptile room, that isn't up to a higher temperature, they like a lower temperature anyway, right? Very low, not very low, but a lower temperature temperature than a lot of other things on the list or a lot of other things that are more common that you might know about and they are arboreal. So these guys you'll find in arboreal enclosures or if that's what you'd have to have if you had one of them. Now these guys I wouldn't call a great handling species. These guys are one to look at and although some people that I've seen post about them and seen talk about them in forums say that they can handle them, 
Uh, you're gonna get bit a few times while you acclimate them to handling, so it is something just to consider. Um, you can handle them, but it's gonna take a little bit more work than, say, a leopard gecko, like Littlefoot came out of the egg and she's like, hold me, can I be a star in the videos? But I don't think you're gonna find that with a, a Mexican alligator lizard or a bronia. And yes, they do come from Mexico and Central America also, so the name is pretty fitting. I just think that any animal that comes from an arboreal habitat that is a little bit lower temperature, it's just a little bit easier to facilitate for a lot of people. It takes up less floor space, I mean, uh, the enclosure might cost a little bit more, but it's just something that I think would be more popular and probably is gonna start growing in popularity so long as you, as long as you don't want something that will sit on your shoulder for four or five seconds and then run down on your lap. Gotcha. All right, let's end it off. Number one, Chuck Wallace. Okay, so the old school guys, anyone who's been keeping reptiles for 10, 12, 15 years, they're gonna say, dude, are you crazy? These things are so, oh wait, I don't see those things anywhere anymore. Exactly. When I was younger, when I first got into reptiles, even before I had reptiles, but I was going to reptile shops, I would see them kind of everywhere. I mean, they are an, an animal that is endemic to California, um, parts of Mexico, basically the Southwest, that area. So it's not hard to find. You can field collect them, bring them in and start, you know, breeding them and making captive breads, but there's not a lot of demand. This is what the Mexican black king snakes were 10 years ago or 15 years ago. They're just kind of like these throwaway animals. I hate to say that. Just nobody wants them. They're easy to find. They're easy to breed. So you can't make a ton of money. You spend more money breeding them than you'll ever make. It just isn't worth your time. But now I think that we're going to start seeing a revival of them. I think these guys are absolutely amazing. They've got these red back, these really cool colorations and not really a pattern, but just the way that their color is spread out. And they're easy to take care of. Low humidity, which is normally easy for most people, right? Especially when you have a big uh, high wattage bulb, which you'll need because they are a desert basking or rocky outcrops is where you'd find them. They're mostly herbivores. So you can go to the grocery store or grow in your garden what they need, keep it in your fridge for a week and you're good. Wham, bam, Bob's your uncle, you got yourself a happy chuckwalla. So I think that it's very interesting that more people don't keep them. And yes, they can be handleable. Now this is one of those things where if you pull 10 people with Chuck Wallace, five of them will say, no, you can't, and five of them will say, yes, you can. I think it's one of those things that start early, be confident, and they become a handleable animal. These guys, in my opinion, are one of my favorites to look at. There used to be a reptile shop that's no longer around that was in my area. They cohab them with bearded dragons, which I wouldn't suggest ever doing. But I remember walking into the shop and looking, and I'm like, what the heck is that thing? And uh, it was just my favorite thing to look at the entire time. The shop's no longer there. I would love to have one. I've never ever seen one at an expo. So I don't know where you'd find one, but I remember back in the day, they were pretty darn cheap. 50, 70 bucks-ish, something like that. And they're pretty plentiful. They're kind of easy to breed. You can feel to collect them if, they're in the, if you're in the US. So I don't know. I, I, it's baffling to me that you don't see them more, but I think this is gonna be one of those things like a Mexican black king snake or a Dumerals boa. Are you impressed I did a whole video and didn't talk about Dumerals boas or spotted pythons? Pretty, pretty impressed. That is going to make it a resurgence, I think. So, Chuck Wallace are number one. So there you go. Those are my top five reptiles that make great pets that you probably or might not have even known about. What do you think? Was this a list where you knew everything or did I surprise you with a couple that maybe you didn't know too much about? Throw that in the comments section. And I did this video because somebody asked. Every video I do because of you. The comment section is where I get all the ideas. So if you've got an idea, throw it down there and maybe your video idea will be next week's video. And before we end, I wanna say a tremendous thank you. Thank you guys so much. Patreon supporters, you get to see videos early. You know about reptiles that I don't talk about too much on the channel or I just haven't got to yet. Vlogs, extra content, things like that. Thank you guys very much. And by the way, something free that you don't have to pay for, the Discord server has been so much fun lately. We've got uh, quite a few people on there. If you like talking about reptiles or basically anything and you don't like fighting and having to deal with the nonsense of other pages that you have to talk to, join the Discord server, uh, link in the description. Have I plugged everything? Hit subscribe. See you on Monday.